was to look out just at the newspapers or the television news at the moment mm. without any question I would be very very depressed mm. but I don't find myself depressed um, and I think one reason is probably the same reason that drew most of us here and that is that I have the impression I can't measure it I can't give you figures but I have the impression that there is a wake-up going on amongst people who are actually consulting their inner wisdom, people who are building up um, a strength of soul, if you like, to become active in not just the field of peace building, but in all sorts of fields that we're going to be talking about tomorrow and the next day. That people are coming into action not from protest only, but from a sense of inner consultation and therefore inner determination. Um, and also using the kind of experience that is bred in a place like Bashara, where we daily practice going inside and listening inside and learning that discipline of inner power and it, that's happening now in the most unexpected places um, I, I, um, I've come across it recently I, I think this is the fourth gathering that I'm aware of of this kind marrying self-awareness with activism or global responsibility in the last two months and there are a whole heap more towards the end of this year. So what's going on here is going on in many other places. Now, I have no idea what that will produce. But what I do know, because I've witnessed it, is that the combination of the inner and the outer, using it in the outer world, is, the, is I was going to say dynamite, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll just tell you a little story to illustrate that, a personal one. Uh, in 1994, I was with um, two busloads of women from various parts of the world trying to get to Sarajevo. And we were uh, going through, we had to go through Croatia and Bosnia. And we, got, we were led by two Bosnian women. There were a number of Bosnian and Croatian and Serbian women with us. And we got to a point where we had to get a laissez passe, a, a permit, to go through the lines of one of the armies that was surrounding Sarajevo. And to do that, we had to go across the rickety bridge from West Mostar to East Mostar, because they'd blown up the 14th century bridge. So there was this wire bridge that the UN had put up. And so we teetered across this bridge and got to the other side, and there was a tap was being used by 6,000 people, one tap. People had been living in cellars or winter eating grass. And there was only two buildings standing. And people, as we, me and these two Bosnian women walked down the street, people were coming out of the cellars because they couldn't believe strangers had come. We got to the, what was called the War Presidency, which was one of the buildings that was still standing, where the commander was who could issue these passes. And it was surrounded by soldiers with their AK-47. And the two Bosnian women were speaking to them. And the soldiers were standing there like this, absolutely uninterested in what the women were saying. And I couldn't understand anything of what was being said, so I thought, well, I... I better meditate. So I did. And into my mind, I came a red rose. And I thought, no, 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 it's too nasty. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it was about the time of Labour Party getting organised. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I meditated again, and back came the red rose. So I thought, oh well. So I mentally <coughs> put it in the heart of the soldier with his gun. And I watched, 
and I watched it, and the women were talking away like mad, and I'm sure it was to do with something they said, but his face began to crack a smile, and he put his gun down and we opened the door, and in we went. And we went upstairs, and the two women went in to see the commander and talk to him, and I sat outside in the ante room where there was a secretary. And we didn't exchange a word, I just sat there. And after a while she disappeared, and she came back and had her hand behind her back, and she walked up to me, and she gave me three red roses, <laughs> which I then gave to the women when they came out with the poet. So I have no idea how that happened, but it does happen an awful lot when you're working with people who use the inner and the outer at the time, and I really invite you to experiment.